All right. Happy Thursday. Feliz jueves. My apologies for not posting any more content. This month has been pretty busy, uh, hectic with family engagements and uh, home life. And I don't know if it's going to um, slow down. Hopefully, once it starts slowing down, I will get the okay to do my Sunday live streams. Um, again, if I have a chance to do a live stream, I will let you know in advance. If I get an okay for this Sunday, I'll send a community post and an invitation uh, on Sunday, but I still don't know. Anyway, we are on lección número 31 from the Madrigal's Magic Key to Spanish. And this is a long one, and it's a very technical one. So I am going to ask you to review the content in the book at least twice uh, because it's even con not confusing but it's it's detailed it's very detailed even for me i get what they're trying to say but again the technical part is a little um a little more challenging than the stuff that we were learning before um, and i don't think i'm going to take you through every page because it's i think it's about 12 pages and again, I want to keep this video to less than 20 minutes. So let me go ahead and uh, put on the PowerPoint. And again, usually what I show the first PowerPoint is a place either from Nicaragua or Venezuela. We are in Venezuela today. And this is a, an amazing place that my parents took us in the um, in La Gran Sabana. I've talked about the, the Great Sabana, I think it's, it's called. It's called Quebrada de Jaspe, um, one of the most unusual and popular waterfalls in the Gran Sabana. Quebrada de Jaspe is known for a, a dramatic plunge, but for the brilliant orange and red jasper rock beneath its waters. Cacuparu, its Pemon name, means Fire Creek, and the design carved by the current create by the current creates a slick surface resembling stripes on a tiger. It's located at kilometer 273 between San Francisco and Santa Elena, 300 meters to the east of the highway, hidden in a stretch of woodland. And it's funny because they talk about um, uh, slick surface and not one person lasts more than 30 seconds standing up. The minute you walk, so you have to be, first of all, you have to be able to uh, be willing to fall because it's it's like walking on ice so slippery so it's i don't think it's a, a good idea for anybody that has any hip problems or knee problems or you know weak joints and bones it's not a good idea you can uh, watch it from the outside you don't want to go in the water because the minute you walk in you will fall and i have some pictures of the times that we were there but you know, there's, I don't know if they're appropriate. There's, there's nothing bad, but we're all in bathing suits and we're, we're younger. And I don't know if that would be the appropriate thing to show. But it's funny because you see everybody trying to keep balance uh, the minute they walk into this slippery uh, uh, place. It's fun. It's a thing to see. So if you ever visit Venezuela, that is one place that I would recommend you don't miss visiting. So let's move on to Los Objetivos del Día. So we are, for Los Objetivos del Día, we're going to see lección, lección número 31, páginas 200, 260 a 279, pages 260 to 279 in the book Madrigal's Magic Key to Spanish. Then we're going to move on to versos bíblicos. Now we are on page 260. Um, if you're listening to this, um, we are going to be looking at lección número 31, and I'm going to read most of the... So I'm going to start on uh, page 260. I'm going to read you most of the narrative, and I'm going to provide you with some examples. And as I said at the beginning, 
I am not going to go through every page because it's pretty technical and that will be up to you to practice and read the rest of the uh, information that I don't uh, show in the video. So this one is about the nonconformist verbs. Basically, there are three main groups of verbs in Spanish, regular verbs, radical changing verbs, irregular verbs. I call the irregular verbs the nonconformists because they don't conform to the rules and frequently go off half cocked in different directions. The nonconformist verbs have a sort of club in which they accept only peculiar verbs as members of their society. As I said, it's pretty technical, so you don't need to stress over this because as you speak the language, you'll start getting used to when to use them. This is more of a, an explanation on how they're used. If a verb has an outstanding idiosyncrasy, it can belong to the nonconformist club. If a verb dares to be regular or even radical changing, the nonconformists will have nothing to do with it, tagging it as too common. Ir, to go, is the pre president of the nonconformist club because it is so completely irregular that you can't even recognize it. It's different tenses unless you know them, which you already do. The nonconformist club consists of 18 important members and a few hangers on. Nonconformist verbs, past tense, preterite. You already know the past tense of most of the nonconformist verbs. Of the 18 verbs, 11 end in e in the first person, singular of the past, and in o in the third man form, singular of the past. You have already studied these verbs and know that the e and the o are not ac accented. The past tense endings of 11 nonconformist non verbs are Singular, e, o. Plural, imos, yeron. For example, this is the most important chart in the book. That's page 261, the top chart. The past tense of irregular verbs snugly in your pocket. Remember that these are the endings of 11 nonconformist verbs. Some are adverbs, some are adverbs, and some are adverbs. But they all have the same past tense endings as in the chart above. Group 1. For your convenience, the letters that should be stressed will be in heavy type in the following lists. So now we are at the bottom of 261. Tener, to have. Tuve, tuvo, tuvimos, tuvieron. Estar, to be. Estuve, estuvo, estuvimos, estuvieron. Andar, anduve, andar to walk. Anduve, Anduvo, anduvimos, anduvieron. Poner, to put. Puse, puso, pusimos, pusieron. Poder, to be able to. Pude, pudo, pudimos, pudieron. Saber, to know. Supe, supo, supimos, supieron. Now we're on page 262. I am not going to read the top page because it's a continuation of what the verbs that we just saw. Now in the, um, in the middle of page 262, where it states, notice that all the verbs end in yeron, in the third person plural, with the exception of the last two verbs, dijeron and trajeron. In these two verbs, the letter I is omitted, or E is omitted, is omitted. Notice that in the 11 verbs above, the first person of each verb sets the pattern for the entire past tense of the verb. Tuve, tuvimos. Vine, vinimos. Tuvo, tuvieron. Vino, vinieron. Once that tuve, once you know that tuve is the first person singular, you can be sure that the three other forms will be with tuv, T-U-V. Only the endings change. Once you establish that the first person of venir is vine, you know that all other forms must begin with vin, V-I-N. 
These verbs play a kind of follow the leader in their irregularities. Two of the 18 nonconformist verbs are completely regular in the past. Oír, to hear, oí, oyó, oímos, oyeron. So now we're on page 263, and we're going to go into um, to the middle of the page. When you wish to say, I want it in Spanish, you generally use the imperfect tense, quería. The imperfect is a past tense that you will learn later on. Quería, I wanted. Quería, you, he, she, it wanted. Queríamos, we wanted. Querían, they wanted. For example, yo quería que me llevaras al teatro. I wanted you to take me to the theater. Nosotros queríamos ir a ver una película. We wanted to go see a movie. Ellos querían salir a jugar. They wanted to go out and play. Notice that there is no difference between the first person and the third man form in the singular. The entire singular is quería, which means I wanted, you wanted, he wanted, she wanted, it wanted. When you wish to say I knew in Spanish, you use the imperfect tense sabía. So now we're on the middle page on the PowerPoint and it's 264 in the book. Saber, to know. Sabía, sabía. Sabía, I knew. Sabía, you, he, she knew. Sabíamos, we knew. Sabían, they knew. Notice that there is no difference between the first person and the third man forming the singular sabía. Means I knew, you knew, he knew, she knew. Now we're moving on to the present tense of nonconformist verbs, group one. Of the 18 members, nine end in go in the first person singular of the present. First person singular present, tengo, I have, vengo, I come, pongo, I put, traigo, I bring, caigo, I fall, digo, I say, hago, I do, I make, oigo, I hear, salgo, I go out. Infinitive, tener, to have, venir, to come, poner, to put, traer, to bring, caer, to fall, decir, to say, hacer, to do, to make, oír, to hear, salir, to go out. The best way to learn these verb forms is by reciting them in groups of threes. Recite them out loud and learn them just as you would learn a poem. This is a, this is a great uh, tip. Stress the heavy type letters firmly. Tengo, traigo, hago. Vengo, caigo, salgo. Pongo, oigo, digo. Now we're on page 265. Of these nine verbs, five are regular in the present except for the first person singular. They are hacer, to do, to make. Hago, I do, I make. Hace, you do, you make, he, she, it does, makes. Hacemos, we do, or we make. Hacen, they, you, do, make, or do. Poner, to put. Pongo, I put. Pone, you put. Tenemos, we put. Ponemos, they put. Then, you will read the bottom of 265 because it's a continuation of those verbs. We, on 266, let me move this slide presentation. On 266, we see two of the nine verbs that end in go. In the first person, singular present are radical changing in all forms except the first person, singular present in the tense. And on these verbs, the e changes to ie, ie. Tengo, tenemos, tiene, tienen. Vengo, venimos, viene, viene. And the last two verbs are irregular in their own sweet way. Decir, to say. Digo, des, dice, decimos, dicen. Oír, to hear. Oigo, oye, oímos, oyen. Actually, in oír, the letter E changes to Y, to Y. Obeying the age-old rule, the letter E changes to Y when it appears between two vowels. Again, we're getting into more of the grammatical uh, rules. 
Of the 18 nonconformists, the four end in oi in the first person singular of the present. They are voy, I go, doy, I give, soy, I am, estoy, I am. You already know that the present of ir is ir, to go, voy, I go, I'm going, va, you go, you are going, vamos, we go, we're going, van, they go, they're going. So on page 267, the top part is the same thing, just go over it. Of the 18 nonconformists do our radical changing in the present tense, that's group three. They made the nonconformist club for irregularities in other tenses, querer, to want, to love. Quiero, I want, or I love. Quiere, you want, or love. Queremos, we want, love. Quieren, they want, love. For example, Yo quiero a mi esposo. I love my husband. Yo quiero comer. I want to eat. So that's how you use the, the, that verb. Then on page 268, we look at poder, to be able. Puedo, I can, puede, you can, podemos, we can, pueden, they can. Group four of the 18 nonconformists, two are completely different from the others in the first person singular, but aside from that, they are regular. These are saber, to know, and ver, to see. Se, I know, sabe, you know, sabemos, we know, saben, they know. Veo, I see, ve, you see, vemos, we see, ven, they see. So I'm going to move on page 268 to the bottom. List of nonconformist verbs, present tense, group one. These end in go, in the first person singular present. Hacer, to do. Hago, hace, hacemos, hacen. Poner, to put. Pongo, pone, ponemos, ponen. Traer, to bring. Traigo, trae, traemos, traen. Then you're going to move on and read uh, the remaining one, two, three, four, five, six, seven verbs and then move to group two, group three, group four, and so forth. On page 269, nine, the bottom um, sentence, it says, master the nonconformist verbs. Nothing you could study before or after these verbs could compare in importance with them. Furthermore, once you have page 270, 270, the continuation, once you have learned them, you will have easy sailing for the rest of your Spanish course. Then you start moving into the sentence forming exercises. Again, I'm, going, I'm just going to make one sentence for each. Tengo un perro. That's uh, part A. Part B is tengo que ir al despacho. Exercise in translation, I am going to read you the sentences in Spanish and you will translate them to English. Tengo un perro, tiene un caballo, tenemos una casa en el campo, tienen un gato, tuve un accidente ayer, tengo que ir al despacho, tengo que trabajar el sábado, tiene que lavar la ropa, tenemos que comprar una casa. Tuve que escribir una carta. Tienen que pintar la casa. Tuvo que vender el auto. Tuvimos que cuidar a los niños. Mi tío tiene que pagar la cuenta. Mi tío tiene que trabajar el sábado. So now there's another exercise at the bottom of page 271, sentence forming exercise two, where you combine the words in different ways to form as many sentences as you can and I advise you to do that on your own. Again, I'm going to just make one sentence per section. Cuando viene a México, quiero ir, puedo hablar español. The same thing on page 273, you have the exercise in translation and you have the um, sentences in English to translate into Spanish, but as I've, I've done it before, I read you the Spanish sentence so you can translate it into English, but in this case, just follow the instructions on page 273. Then you move on to sentence for forming exercises number three, the same thing. You pick uh, one of each column and create as many sentences as you can. These, these are all practice um, 
problems. Page 276. Let me move on to page 276 because that's where you have additional explanations on, um, on a verb, verb tener, at the bottom of page 276. In Spanish, we do not say, I'm hungry, I'm cold, etc. Instead, we say, I have hunger, I have cold, etc. Tengo hambre, I'm hungry. Tengo frío, I'm cold. Tengo calor, I'm warm. Tiene hambre, are you hungry? Tiene frío, are you cold? Tiene calor, are you warm? So you're going to move on to page 277, the top. It continues to give you examples on how to use the verb tener. Middle of the page, you can also ask the question, ¿Qué tiene? Which means, what's wrong with him? What has he got? In uh, translated literally. ¿Qué tiene? Means, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? ¿Qué tiene Carlos? Means, what's wrong with Charles? You can also say, ¿Qué le pasa a, a, a Carlos? Tengo ganas de means, I feel like, and it's used with the infinitive. Tengo ganas de nadar. I feel like swimming. Tuve ganas de nadar. I felt like swimming. He tenido ganas de nadar. I have felt like swimming. ¿Tienes ganas de nadar? Do you feel like swimming? Tener is also used to express a person's age. Tiene un año. He's a year old. Tiene dos años. He's two years old. ¿Cuántos años tiene? How old is he? Tienes diez años. Tiene diez años. He's ten years old. Don't forget that tiene is the third man form singular and refers to anybody but yourself. Tiene 15 años. You're 15 years old. He's 15 years old. She's 15 years old. Now the following are additional explanations on uh, some of the uh, verbs that are nonconformists. I'm going to read you the last um, part of page 279 where it says, Sometimes Spanish-speaking people say eight days ago instead of a week ago and 15 days ago instead of two weeks ago. Why? Heaven only knows. Hace ocho días, a week ago. Hace quince días, two weeks ago. Hacer is used in the three other common idiomatic expressions. Hacer caso, to pay attention. No hace caso, he doesn't pay attention. No hacen caso, they don't pay attention. No hice caso, I didn't pay attention. No hizo caso, you, he, she didn't pay attention. Hacer daño, to be bad for, to make harm, to do harm. Me hace daño, it's bad for me, it does me harm. Me hace daño la, me hace daño la leche, milk doesn't agree with me. Or milk harms me, more literally. Hace falta, to miss, to make a lack, to need. Me hace falta Carlos, I missed Charles. Me hacen falta los niños. I miss the children. Me hizo falta Luis. I miss Luis. Me hace falta mi esposo. I miss my husband as he's working today and I'm, I'm staying um, at home today. So we are done with this section. Um, again, lesson number 31. Lesson number 31 is pretty technical. And again, you're going to have to review it uh, quite a few times just to get used to those nonconformist verbs. Again, um, once you start practicing the language, it's, it's actually going to come naturally. The more you use it, the more you'll understand how they come together in a sentence. And again, with, with any language, practice makes perfect. If you don't use it, you lose it. Again, I, I got to tell you, some of this stuff I really forgot because I don't use it as much. I just, when I speak to my mom, when I talk to my mom and dad, it just comes naturally. And sometimes I make, make mistakes because, I, you know, my husband speaks English. He doesn't speak Spanish. So I don't have the opportunity to practice my Spanish as much as I could. In fact, I was looking for a job where I could um, speak Spanish uh, more often than I do now because it's just I notice that I'm losing it um, anyway let's move on to la tarea we're gonna leer las lecciones numero 31 y 37 again review lessons number 31 and lesson 37 it probably is going to be as technical because I noticed that in the mid-20s and 
uh, lessons between 25 and, and, and 30s, we've been going into more technical um, uh, use of the Spanish language. Lección número 37 are verbo, verbs that end in ser, establecer, to establish. Number 37, right here. Uh, it would be a good idea just to, you know, uh, kind of like read it at a glance. You don't need to know it because we're going to go over in a little bit. Um, but it prepares you. Again, now we're looking into much more detailed grammatical rules for uh, the verbs that you're going to be using on an everyday basis. And then continuar viendo canales de televisión or YouTube en español con subtítulos en inglés. And lastly, we're going to end with a um, Bible verse, and it all has to do with how the Bible teaches us um, on how to be kind to one another. And in this case, I decided to, uh, I selected Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And the reason I chose this one is because we are living in, in a world where there's a lot of um, nonsense and things that are a, a little challenging to understand, but this is what the Lord tells us. Jeremías capítulo 29 Versículo 11. Mis planes para ustedes solamente yo lo sé, y no son para su mal, sino para su bien. Voy a darles un futuro lleno de bienestar. So this one is, you know, it just allows us to um, look forward to what he's got planned for us. He doesn't have to tell us what he's got planned. He just shows us in um, our path what he has planned for us anyway i hope that you like this chapter i know it's a little it's a little challenging it's a lot uh, of technical stuff and again if i if i have a chance to do to prepare for a live session i will let you know on sunday if i can otherwise i look forward to the next spanish session anyway I will let you know if I decide to do a live. Uh, I have nothing else for you today. My dogs are going crazy. Uh, until next time, adios. Los quiero mucho. Chao.